what we're seeing is they previously had this market snookered. They previously had kids, both parents in you know working, and in, in order to raise these kids, you'd had to give it to the state, these three kids, you give them to the state, and they'd come home and they'd want to chop their genitalia off, or they'd be spouting all this crap about LGBT, or everything to do with regards to, you know, Aboriginal stuff, that's a false whitewashed history, and it's like, what the hell is this, why does my kid want to be a communist? Okay, what's next, university? As soon as you know it, it's not your kid. They previously had this snooker, and what's that's really right. interesting about that is technology has been a complete an amazing thing i mean tiktok now i used to be really worried it would just be full of dancing and everything and kids being you know not focusing on engineering and 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 amazing things going online but tiktok is now full of people like bishop mar murray stoicism christianity and it's like a revolution it's like a new renaissance for christianity and it's and and what made the west great and i see that and they don't like it because they previously had this clamped down mm. and now they're reacting and it's a closing window for them. They have to bring in some authoritarianism to so that they, the kids don't get access to it. And I think that's what's driving this. California, Victoria, um, South Australia, New South Wales, they're all looking at um, banning social media for kids. I believe this is why. Well, if you look at one of the biggest and most important things to take into account here is why are we seeing this come out of the kids in the way that we are? It's because, let's step back a minute. Look at people 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago. People, when you look at their core, who they are, especially if you look at Australians or before when they were in the UK and Europe, if you look at who these people were before all this happened, they weren't... Marxism would never have taken off in the past. They would have gone, what? That's crazy. Why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense. So if you look at it, what is actually happening is they're being exposed to imagery and videos and information now that is triggering something in their subconscious. It's triggering something that is written into them that, you know, their fathers, mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, all of those people in their heritage, doesn't matter where they're from, it's, it's all their people in their heritage, it's coming out of them. When they see things of the past that look beautiful, it triggers something in them. When they see the old-fashioned photos, it triggers something. When they see all the Christianity, it triggers something in them. Because if you look at a lot of these people who are involved in, say, climate change, I've met a lot of them. A lot of them aren't bad people. They're not bad people. They really aren't. But if you look at their belief in it, it is a spiritual belief. They're filling a void that's in them that's been in their DNA for thousands of years of their ancestors who have had Christianity or before that they had paganism. They had some sort of spirituality. And then they come into this modern world where they've had it removed and they're trying to fill that void. And that's why they go to things like climate change or any of the other Marxist agendas and they take that on board into themselves. And when they actually do that, that's when they don't actually know who they are anymore. And they're going down this path of what they know is wrong, but they can't put their finger on it. And that's when they see these young kids who are still impressionable and haven't gone down that path yet. They see something like Christianity and it triggers something in them. Their parents and their grandparents might have been Christian and it triggers something in them and they remember it. I mean, because people forget in terms of genetics, but no one else, uh, really talks enough about it. But if you look at genetics, everybody has a genetic you know, material from their parents, their grandparents. You are your grandparents. You are your great grandparents. You, you are never going to get away from that fact. They helped make you and what you are. And all their mannerisms, their beliefs, their thoughts, the way that their thought process works, that's in them too. And I think when you look at that and look at why these people are responding to this, it's because it's people before them talking to them. It's through their genetics. Their genetics are being expressed. If you look at some people in the world, you know, um, they come from a country where it's all very strong people. When they go and lift weights or see weightlifting they're attracted to it because it's in their genetics to be that yeah when you put them under pressure yeah. it cracks something open it does it's really cool isn't absolutely it? well if there's yeah, generational trauma perhaps there's generational non-trauma you know yeah, exactly. you've got something in the back there it gets passed down well mimesis sort of a, a cultural memory that that we all definitely have um and, and christianity is is a very strong version of it um but um it's interesting that sort of speaking of the very young generation, I mean, we, ha we have to also acknowledge that, for example, that the Black Lives Matter riots and the modern trans movement probably also wouldn't have happened without the social media either. I mean, you could imagine, for example, exp someone experiencing gender dysphoria 50 years ago or even 30 years ago. Um, who do you tell? Well, you don't tell anyone. And so 
communities of people who feel this can't be formed. But if you have the internet and social media, you can go anonymous on Reddit or something and say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And you wake up the next morning, 3,000 people have written and said, hey, I feel the same thing. And communities are born. So, you know, the internet has also given us the, um, well, um, the, um, the, the, the certain madnesses of crowds that, 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 we're, that we're seeing. Um, but it's interesting the, the very young generation, the Zoomers, you know, those, for example, born in the, the 2010s, for them, um, more conservative takes on the family and Christianity are very exotic ideas because they didn't in any way grow up with them. Sure. I was born in 1978, and even I, when I went to Sunday school as a kid, there were kids in the street whose parents didn't go to church, but they sent their kids to Sunday school. And so the, the point that I'm making is that sort of Generation X and earlier, they were a generation brought up who got a little bit of Christianity, got a little bit of conservatism, and kind of like you would inoculate someone from, a, from, from I don't want to call these things a disease, they're not, in fact, I love them, uh, but like you would inoculate someone from a disease by giving them a little bit of it, same kind of thing happened, and, and, that, and their attitude to these things was cynical. Oh, I know about Christianity, I, I, I want nothing to do with that. Of course, they know very little about it, but they think they do. Oh, those conservative gender roles, oh, yes, yes, I, I remember that, I want nothing to do with that. But the, the, the youngsters, for them, it's so new. And that's the exciting thing about it. And that's why guys like Jordan Peterson get quite a lot of traction nowadays. And, and other people get a lot of traction among young people because these are really new ideas. And in that respect, I see uh, the Internet as total game changer. I see Elon Musk as kind of the Donald Trump of the internet. He doesn't care what people think he's going to do, what he wants to do. He's not a creature of the internet technocracy. He's an outsider. Uh, he's a cowboy. And it's a very exciting age to be in. And, and in a sense, I'm kind of pessimistically optimistic about the future. I think actually really good things are going to come. It's just I think we're going to have to go through some serious pain. We need to, we need to protect Elon at all 